if you are a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fast Pitch TV show. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, MySpace, or some other video sharing site, please go check out our website. It's www.fastpitch.tv. And I'd also like to thank our sponsor, Softball Junk. Please visit their website at softballjunk.com. Do some business so they'll keep advertising here. Now, have you heard of Softball Con? It's happening at the end of January in Louisville, Kentucky. That's like a week from now. If you're not aware of Softball Con or you're just not familiar with it, you need to go check it out, okay? Now, Softball Con is scheduled for January the 28th and the 29th. And it's in Louisville, Kentucky. Like I said, it's a two-day softball conference with a ton of great speakers. It is for both coaches and players alike. Okay, so it's for everybody. Check out their website, softballcon.net, and see for yourself what you think of it. Now, I'm taking the Fast Pitch TV cameras there. They want me out there to do some interviews, so we're going. So if you're at the conference, make sure and come up to me. And say hello. That is, if you see me, that is. But say hello to me if you see me. I love it when people tell me they watch the show or, or say something. Or even if they say, hey, I like the show. It just lets me know people are watching. It really makes my day. And it makes, I guess it makes it all seem worth it, okay? Now let's get to today's show. Now if you've watched this show for a while, then you know that former Team USA pitcher Bill Hillhouse is a friend of the Fast Pitch TV show. Now a few weeks ago, Bill was in town giving pitching lessons. Now, he gives lessons, pitching lessons, once a month at the Home Run Alley in Carrollton, Texas. That's where he's at, close to me at least ways. Now, while he was there this time, I took the Fast Pitch TV cameras over. Bill invited me to come, so I took the cameras and filmed him giving lessons to a few players. Now, what I like about Bill's lessons is, is he's totally involved with the pitcher you know, while he's teaching them. He catches them. He, he, the whole time he's working with them. I've seen lots of pitching coaches, and I have to say Bill is one of the best. I mean, like I said, he actually even catches the ball. He doesn't have a dad down there just sitting there watching. He's working with them. Now, on today's show, I'm going to bring you segments of his lessons with, with the players. Now, these are just segments, basically him talking to the pitchers while he's working with them. I didn't think you want to see him sitting on a whole bucket the whole time. Okay, so now I do apologize to you for the sound during this show. The batting cages, well, they just don't have the best acoustics for recording. And there's also a baseball team running their practice at the same time. So you put those two together and, well, it makes for less than great audio. But I, I still think it's a great video. And if you're into pitching, I think you're going to enjoy watching Bill working with the players and what he has to say to them, basically. Because that's all this really is, is Bill working with the players. But uh, let's go right to that lesson right after this word from our sponsor. Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham! You just put a cool $30 in your pocket. You get older and you decide that you want to become a pitching coach, right? And you're going to start teaching kids how to pitch. Remember something, you get one minute of attention span per year of age. So if you're dealing with a 10-year-old, you've got about 10 minutes, and then you've got to make sure they take a break from it. Right. Brain. I want you to look at his watch what her front foot does, how she kind of twists it. Okay? Twist it. Okay? Now, have, you got it? I know it's hard because we're indoors. We're not like, you know, it's not actually having a rubber there with a little push off us. But you got to try to imagine in your brain that the rubber is like a starter point. Get ready to push off like a sprinter does. Now, have you ever in your life seen a sprinter take off? Ready? Right, set, go. No, they don't twist their foot. They keep everything straight and they push it. That's what we got to try to do here, too. Don't let your foot go sideways. Otherwise, straight is going to then be that way. Keep it straight. Okay. Do you like to hit yourself? Yeah. Do 
you walk down the street with yourself in the head. No. Um, so we don't want to hit ourselves when we pitch either. And understand something that that does a couple of things. Number one, not only is her body going in multiple directions when she does that, but number two, the smack is actually helping the hitters be able to time when the pitch is being released. Now, another cue that they can use to help time you. We don't want to help them any more than we have to. Okay? So we really want to control your glove. Don't let your glove control you. So what I want you to do is I want you to play catch with yourself over and over again when you do that. And the more she practices doing that, the more she throws the ball into her own glove, you can be working on three or four different things all at once. Number one, you can be working on your glove, not swimming, because if your glove goes out, you'll be able to use the ball. And number two, you can be working on snapping the elbow instead of going out. Bending. I don't want you to bend. I don't want you to whip it. Okay? Take the pressure off of your shoulder by using the other parts of your arm. Okay. Remember there's a basic rule of thumb though with any pitch that we throw, and that rule of thumb is that the more hand you have on the ball, the less speed you have on the pitch. Okay? So anytime you're gripping the ball like this, and you can take it out of your hand a little bit, you want to take it out. Anytime you're gripping a ball with four fingers, and you can grip it with three, you want to grip it with three. Anytime you're gripping with three, and you can grip it with two, you want to grip it with two. It will take longer to get out of your hand, which means a slower pitch, if you have more of your hand on the ball. So, whatever grip you choose to use for any of your pitches, keep that in mind. More hand means less speed. So you really want to kind of temper your grip with that in mind. Keep it in mind, okay? Now again, my thumb goes underneath. My fingertip goes underneath there. You have to use whatever, the rest of your hand, wherever it feels comfortable. Because these two are my keys. This is the key. So. So she has to use those two fingers. Well, that, for the grip I use. I would make it. I would implore you guys to ask other pitching coaches, look online, do whatever it takes. Find a grip that works for you. Okay. The, I do not have the corner market on on this grip. Right? This is not the end all be all grip to use. It's how it's what I use, and I'll explain to you why. Some grips are more advantageous than others, but that doesn't mean they're right. There's some people who can make the ball spin a certain the, the way we want it to, gripping it ways I can't do. Okay. So. Find what's comfortable for you. Remember, the rotation is absolute. It has to be a certain way. How you get it to spin that way does have a little bit of freedom. She gets a little bit of leeway in her own. Okay. So here's my grip. Okay. Now use your as I do this. What I'm going to do when I do this is I'm going to come down. And notice how my elbow is bent. I'm not stiff like what we're trying to get you to avoid doing. I'm going to lead with the elbow, and I'm going to come down. I'm going to come in close to my belly. I'm not going to go around and I'm not going to pull my shoulder. I'm coming close. My thumb is pointing to third base. If I'm looking at my capture, third base is right over there. So my thumb is pointing to third. In the blink of an eye, I need my thumb to go from the top of the ball to behind the ball. Just like this. I roll. At the exact same time I roll my thumb, I push my finger. And that's why I cock my finger the way that I do, because then my finger helps turn underneath the ball. And whichever way my finger points is the way the ball spins. So if my finger points straight up in the air, the ball just spins straight up in the air. If my finger points over there towards that direction, the ball just spun that direction. So we want to make sure that as I roll down, I push up. That's how I grip mine. It's not the end all be all. Okay? Roll and spin. Now it's very easy for you to remember how to do this. Bill's number one. Okay? With this finger, I'm number one. Don't give me the other one. Okay? <laughs> I'm on to you. I know all the tricks, man. Okay? I invented them. Okay. So, using your double ball, make sure that they're lined up. Seams are on top of each other there. Okay? Grip the bottom one with your grip. Doesn't matter which one's the bottom one. Either one. Grip the bottom one. And then as you come down, she gets her hand in the same position as I was just in. We want the we want the weight of the top ball to help us turn underneath. Okay. So that when I go to throw it, it's going to spin out of my hand straight back. Okay. So this spin right here, I'm going to flip it to you. Okay. Spin. So that ball just spun straight backwards. Yeah. That's the spin we're looking for. So what I did is I came down. You didn't hear me, but I said, Bill's number one. Look at that. Perfect. Okay? So roll it, and I'm going to push it. If you do it wrong, very likely what you're going to see is a catcher. Because you're going to see 
Kirk felt to go over the side of the ball, which would be like a bullet spin instead of backspin. Bullet spin with this, it's going to look like this. Okay. Both balls are spinning like a bullet. So we really got to get her to roll the thumb and push the finger and make it spin backwards. Okay? So let's just practice a couple times with that thing. But super glue is a, is a really good pitcher's tool that you can put like right on that right before the skin tears. So it doesn't have any medical value, so after you scare tear the skin, you're screwed. Okay? But put it on before, and then it, it won't. Then you're going over the glue and not over the skin. Okay? And then you can you can constantly you know every two innings or something add some glue onto it. Make it the more outward your arm goes from your head more strain we put in our scapula up into our rotator and all that. I mean, even baseball pitchers today, a lot of times are being taught to come over the top as much as possible because they want their arm to be as much in a straight line as they possibly can. You don't see very many Kenta Colve types from way back when we were young and their arms would drop way out because that's what tears up the shoulder. So what I want you to do then is I want you to really try to focus on making your bicep touch your ear. If you can touch your ear with your bicep or come as close to it as possible, then touch your belly, then you're going to know your arm with a straight circle. So touch your ear, and then your belly. Ear, belly, okay? If you start to feel the pain, that's probably telling you your arm's going out away from your head. So bring it up closer. Touch your ear, touch your belly, okay? Do it in a mirror. When, you, when you're working on the other stuff too, do it in a mirror where you touch your ear, touch your belly. Okay? Those two parts of my arm, touch those two parts of my body, and my arm went straight. It went right over top of my line. I go. And if I don't, it went out away so from my head. Pitching, your arm does do that? You, it's pretty close. Pretty close. It's pretty close. The okay. further out away from it I is. I figure if it touches any part of your, any part of your body, it's not something. Yeah, it could hit, it could impede the circle. Yeah. yeah, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. But remember though, if I step sideways, if I get myself sideways, I'm not really going to be touching any part of my body. I'm going to be kind of grazing right past it very, very closely. But the, the more gap you see between her arm and her ear, the more you know her arm went in an incorrect circle. The more gap you see between her arm and her body, the more you know her arm went in an incorrect circle. So, yeah, so it's a good idea to keep ice in it, because every time you move around, you're moving stuff around in your body, things can get inflamed. It's always a good idea to ice stuff, but uh, you know, you shouldn't be feeling any pain, especially at your age. Pain, pain is a very good sign of telling you you're not doing something right. And like I just got done telling these other people, Pain is a very good way of knowing that something isn't right, right, especially at their age. Okay, so we really want to make sure that what we're doing is the way your body is designed to move. Okay, and the simplest way that I can explain this so that you're going to be able to help her on a day-to-day -day basis is to take how you throw a ball overhand and turn it upside down. And we're going to apply a lot of the same principles to the overhand motion versus the underhand motion. Okay, now, first thing that we need to do is what do you do when you warm up? What's the first thing you do? back and start pitching slow. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. You're not doing all kinds of crazy drills and we have your video. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're the one who has it. Okay. Okay. We've been working a little bit. So all right. The main thing that we gotta make sure we do is that we're not gonna do anything that isn't what we actually do when we pitch. Okay? That's why it's one of the reasons why I don't want her doing snaps and, and different things like that. I want her to do just like I don't want you pitching with a locked elbow. You don't see any baseball pitchers pitching with a locked elbow doing this. We're not going to do that either. Right? So, what we do need to do, and I saw you pitching a little bit, is that you are having a little bit of an issue of stopping your arm. Okay? So, I'm going to give you some homework to help you fix that. It's not going to be something you're going to be able to fix instantly today. It's going to take some time. So, be patient. Don't get mad at me. Okay? Don't call me names. Okay? Okay. Good. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you start sideways, and I want to see what your K looks like. Up and down. Now, the key in doing the K is I want her to make sure that her arms and legs move together. Okay. I don't want this. Okay, I want everything to move together. Up together, down together. Okay? When you do it, try to make your forearm touch your belly. If your forearm touches your belly, then you know you can't move your body. I'm not around your because the next drill that we do, the exercise that we do, is you're going to start off sideways, and instead of going backwards, I'm going to have you go forwards. Okay? Now the ball will go wherever the shoulder points if she comes through the bottom. 
body. Okay. If she doesn't, keep her shoulder straight, that's what the ball's going to do. Shoulder going to be Okay. Now, the number one cause of the shoulder going out is the glove is not being in control. Do you, do you swim out with your glove? Okay. That's, okay. The inconsistency is, is probably part of the problem. One of the other things, too, is that the, the homework that I'm going to give her is going to help her fix about three or four different things. It's not like, you know, you can just do it once and think, oh, I've done it. This is going to be a day-by-day day, day day thing. We're going to have to do it 10, 15 minutes a day. You don't have to do it hours and hours and hours every single day. But if you just did it 10 to 15 minutes a day, that's going to go miles, miles for training her muscle memory because it's mostly muscle memory. Okay, so we just got to teach your body how to move the same way every single time. Okay, the first thing you got to do is relax, relax, and remember the two rules. Okay, if you throw the ball, it goes over there. That tells you your arm went around your body, didn't touch your stomach. If you throw it, it goes over there. Tells you your shoulder was off. Shoulder goes straight, ball goes straight. Shoulder goes out, ball goes out. Okay, so you snap right up through. Notice I didn't stop. And then bring it. You've trained yourself to kind of stop your arm. So we're going to try to untrain you. To do it. And that's going to take time and a lot of pitching to herself. Throwing the ball right into her glove. Just like that. Up. Down. Okay? If you see she's got side spin on the ball, which, okay, that is because her arm is twisted at the top. She doesn't have the ball facing third base at the top where it rot rotates okay. down and then comes yeah. straight off. She's typically either like this, where she comes down and she twists, or she's like this, where she comes down and she twists, okay? She's not coming down with her fingertips pointed to the ground. And that's just, again, that's just muscle memory right now. So be patient. Don't get mad. We're going to start off sideways, and I'm going to go circle. And I'm still going to focus on turning my ball over to third base at the top of my circle. I'm not going to curl. I'm not going to turn, okay? Then we're gonna little, we're gonna add little things as we go as we do this, okay? So try. First thing we're gonna try as you do this is we're gonna try not to let the ball drop below your waist. As soon as she does that, she's gonna lock her elbow. So we're gonna try to keep your hands right at your waist. Elbows are flexed, okay? And then, then what we're gonna add is we're gonna add a rocking motion where she does this. And she's gonna use her arms to kind of get some momentum to go forward with, okay? Now, pretend like you're rocking a baby, okay? You're not shaking the crap out of them, okay? You're just kind of rocking them, and you're gonna push your glove right towards me as you step. And see how I didn't let my arms come down. I kept everything above my waist, and I went. She crow hops. I don't know if you know that, but what a crow hop is is when a pitcher goes, they jump up in the air, okay? And the reason you get sore is because your arm it's going up, and it's stopping, and then you're forcing it with the rest of your body, okay? The way we fix a crow hop, and again, watch the difference in my feet. Here's the difference, here's a crow hopper, here's what they do, they go, and they replant. They basically land and then throw the ball again. A leaper, like Monica Ab, or not Monica Ab, uh, what the uh, Osterman, when she pitches, she leaps, but she doesn't crow hop. She goes up in the air, and comes down. Now, technically, both are illegal. You're not allowed to leave the ground, okay? She's crow hopping. London's crow hopping because she's stopping and then doing this. That's why your arms get sore, is because you're stopping and then you're using muscle, okay? And I don't want you to use muscle, okay? I want you. So, the way we fix the footwork problem with the crow hop is we speed up the arm. If her arm is going fast, her feet don't have a chance to go sideways. So, crow hopping is actually fixed by fixing the hands. It's not really a problem with the feet. It's, it's caused by the hand work. So if we get you to stop doing this and just go smooth, then your feet aren't going to do this crow hop. Okay? So the main thing I want you to think about is I want you to think about fast with the arm circle. Fast, 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 fast. Don't slow down. Don't hitch it. Don't try to muscle it. Stay smooth all the way around. Fast. Okay? And you're going to go like this. No, you know what? No, let's do it full moment. Just like you're in a game. Push off. I'm afraid I'm going to mess up and give away my 10, 100 bucks.
that just demonstrated to her? Because that tells us how far out her glow is pulling. Okay. So, again, along the same lines of what I was just talking about with the drills and the warm-ups and the practices that I wanted to do, what she needs to do is play catch with herself before she throws it into her own glove. When she throws it into her own glove, if she misses it, it's going to be because her glove went way out like this. Because when you're pitching, you're going like this. You're going way out like this. Okay, it's been been. So how we gotta fix it is to oops, have her play catch with herself over and over again. You throw it in your glove here, and then have her back there. You go up higher, and then circle, and then go full mile. Okay? Because right now, buddy, your glove is so far out over here like this, you're nowhere, you're not even gonna be in the same ballpark to catch the glove. And the only reason you even hit the gloves is you cheated. You held your glove in tight to you. What I want her to do in one of her homeworks is to just practice into her glove, just like this. Because right now, she's so far out swimming, she ain't going to catch it. So you're going to have to kind of back chain a little bit. Go slow. And as she's doing it, she can work on the elbow. Snap it here. And then you can start adding the foot. When you're doing it in the mirror, the other thing you can do too often is, and I hope you guys can remember all these little things. Do it in a mirror. Put a sticker right on her shoulder right here. And if she can see her own sticker, she's gonna know that she did not hide the back shoulder. She should hide. So the catcher only sees one shoulder, one hip, one hip. Okay? Not both. Okay? So, and that's all because you're doing this. With this. And you fix that by just playing catch with yourself. And it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's pretty dramatic. Pretty drastic. Okay? 99% of the time when a pitcher leans when they release, it's because she came down and her front knee is bending. As soon as we straighten up that leg, her weight's going to come back. Okay? So what I want you to remind yourself of is to come down against a firm front side. Don't let your knee bend. Keep your leg straight and remind yourself to lift the ball with your chin behind your belt. So you're tall when you're against the ball. Everything is not staying straight. So the, the more she can fix staying straight, all of these little things are going to add up. And she's swimming and she's coming around and all of this stuff. Yes, she's going to be able to fix that with doing this stuff in front of a mirror. Okay, it's snapping. Okay, so I want to make sure that I come down. Leg is straight, not locked, but straight. Okay. So that my weight is back, my shoulders are behind me, back, my chin is behind my belly button. body's going to have a tendency to go the direction that your toes point. The more you can get yourself to turn your toes, the more your hips turn. Then your arm can come through. When your toes point straight, your hips then point straight. And so she's going to go around. Okay. So we got to really focus on making sure that when you step out, you turn your toes. 45 degree angle or so. The more you go straight, the more everything goes straight. Okay? Remember, turn the toes. All right? or if you want to be good, you got to eat soft. I mean, you got to make this something you do every day, every day, every day. Don't, don't think, oh, I don't, I'd rather do this. I mean, I'm talking 10 minutes a day, okay? Not hours and hours and hours. I mean, the more you do it, the better you're going to be. But this is something that you really, I mean, the best in the world are the best in the world because they did it every single day. When I was your age, I pitched every single day. And when I didn't have a catcher, I pitched up against a brick wall. I mean, through and through and through and through and through. So, and the other thing too is I'm teasing you a little bit, but understand, I've done everything that you're doing. Throwing them high, throwing them sideways, throwing them everywhere. I've tried everything. I've tried every grip on the ball. I've tried every motion. I've tried every everything. I've been there. I've done it. I never played baseball. I only ever played softball. So I've been there. So I'm just teasing you. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> All right? Okay, let's see what your changeup looks like. What I want to do is I want to add something to her changeup. Okay? Which side do you want me to hear? This way? Right now, what you're doing is you're coming around and you're flipping your wrist backwards, which is great, okay? That's what takes the speed off the ball, is flipping your wrist. 
But what's making the ball go really high is two things. Number one, you're letting it go way out here. And number two, you're putting backspin on the ball. Okay? Backspin on the ball is going to not only make the ball sometimes keep floating, but it's going to stop it from sinking. And so what we got to do is we got to try to do something, put some spin on the ball to stop it from going really high. Okay? So what I want you to do, and remember one of the things I told you, is that I want your elbow to snap. Okay? So your hand actually is going to kind of finish here. I want you now to make your change up come where you flip your wrist and turn your hand at the same time so the back of your hand finishes over to your opposite shoulder. This extra movement of bringing the hand over to the shoulder is going to stop you from throwing it up like this and it's going to make you come over. It's going to also add a little bit of top spin to the ball to make the ball sail down and away from the batter as opposed to flipping it straight back. Okay. So the other thing that it does is that to the naked eye, it helps to see what pitch we're throwing. We're going to throw, when you go to pitch, we're going to make your drop look like this. We're going to make your rise ball look like this. You're going to throw your change up, it's going to look like this. To the naked eye, your hand is finishing to the same spot, so it's going to look identical. It's going to look identical. So we've got to make sure that we're training yourself to flip your hand up and over. This is the speed control. This is the height control. If you do it right, it all happens all at once. You go right to there. Okay? We're just going to turn your hand over a little bit more. Okay? I hope you enjoyed today's show. Like I said, I think Bill is a great softball coach. Bill gives lessons all across the country. To see his schedule or find out if he's in your area, just visit his website, schoolofpitching.com. Now, I want to make sure that everyone who watches this show knows we have an app for the iPhones and for the Android phones. So basically, we got you covered. Just go to your phone's app store and search Fast Pitch or Softball, and you'll find it. So how about uh, check it out and help support the show. It costs $1.95, but what a great way to help support the show. Now, don't forget to check out our website at fastpitch.tv, like I said earlier. Become a fan of the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash fastpitchtv. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fastpitchtv. That's it for today's show. Goodbye, and thanks for watching.